What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with the first viewer challenge I've done in absolutely ages and partly this is because the challenge just happened to also be something that I was kind of keen to fill in in my fleet so Drills007 basically said this death loader stuff is all well and good but you've got a massive gap in your capabilities you've got big heavy hitting artillery, you've got little fighters and there's nothing in the middle that's really practical and that can deal with short range engagement uh, and basically he, he wanted me to make a, a cruiser that was capable of firing some sort of short-range bolt. And I've interpreted this a little bit and gone, rather than for a cruiser, for a, what I would term as a destroyer. So something a little smaller than a cruiser, aimed at combating fighters, bombers, other ships of similar size to it or a little bit smaller. So what we have in front of me here is as yet unnamed, but is what I've decided to make for this challenge, and it isn't strictly a cruiser. I've gone more for a, what I'd term as a destroyer class ship, as in it's designed to be combating other ships of its own size or ships smaller, to fight fighters, to fight bombers, but to have sufficient sting and sufficient armour that it can fight those without too much threat to itself. So before we go too much into the details of what exactly this thing's got on it and what it can do, let's do a little fire demonstration. And unfortunately today the workshop is playing up for me. I can't get anything to download and so I don't have anything from the Kill My Ship. I've got, uh, I'm so short for targets, I've got the large red ship and I've got my vulture of all things because that's kind of fi fighter sized-ish, that sort of idea. Um, so let's go and have a... You use this one on, might as well use this one to get the, the vulture here. And first things first, I'll turn this on and you'll notice that this thing this thing's quick. It, it, it moves fast. Um, and the idea with this is that not only does it move fast, but it's more than capable of moving fast and also launching these things while doing so. So let's get the, res, uh, the vulture in our sights. We can just charge towards it, hit four. Those are going to launch off and we can immediately maneuver away. It's given it a nice little welcome and then we can open up with our onboard weaponry. And you'll notice that at the moment I am firing my Gatling and my rocket launchers at the same time, and that's one of the other features I've stuck on here. And that's simply by having a timer, you can turn the Gatling on and off with one, and then you can use the built-in weapon systems to fire your rockets with a little bit more degree of control, with the basis that you're going to be trying to point at the target all the time, so the Gatling's got a pretty good chance of hitting whatever it is you're shooting at. But at the same time, the rockets, you're going to want a little bit more control over those. Make sure you time the release just right. And as you can see, the Vulture the vulture bought it, pretty much. I'm amazed that this bit still has power. I'm not sure. There must be a single reactor tucked in there. But yeah, you get the idea of how this can function. And on the toolbar, you'll start to also get an idea of some of the other functionality we've got on board here. So one is what turns our Gatling on and off. Two is obviously our reloadable rocket launchers. On four, we have what we're using to launch these projectiles. And of course, these projectiles have warheads in them. While they're defended, they have warheads in them. So if we dive over to the other version over here, I can talk to you a little bit about these warheads because they are an intrinsic weakness. Anytime you stick warheads onto a ship, they're going to be a bit of a weakness. These I've done my absolute best to protect. So they do have quite a bit of protection. You can't just shoot at them, expect them to explode. You have to get a shot in just the right place or hit it with something explosive. And because of that, they've all got sensors on them in order to trigger them, because these things will actually hit fighters and bounce off rather than explode naturally. Because fighters tend to be, I don't know, there's something to do with small ship collisions that means that the same thing doesn't happen as when you have a large ship collision. So that's the onboard weapon system, and it's a weapon system you obviously you're designed to release quite early on in the fight. Let it loose, and then as soon as you've let it loose, you can go back to being what is essentially a very maneuverable and a very well armoured fighter. But some of the other features we have on here are tucked into the wings here, we have a pair of decoy blocks, one on each side. That's just to draw fire away from things like the cameras, because of course this is also remote control capable. And more than that, I, I, I like having pilotable craft because I do believe there are circumstances where you need a pilotable craft. You can't just get away with using cameras. Cameras are intrinsically tricky to use and they're intrinsically limited in the field of view. So I like having them with a cockpit in them, but this thing doesn't just have a cockpit. So in fact, what we can do is we can use this to demonstrate. And the main thing I've done with this is try to make it about as tough as possible. So as well as being completely survival ready, all convey it up with an access point on the back to refill everything with its own oxygen generation systems, with a batch backup battery system in case you run out of um, uranium or in case for some reason or another the reactors get taken out. It is coated in cameras 
and backup cameras. So these are all central located cameras for aiming with, but there are three of those so that if at any point one of them gets knocked out, you've got backups for it and you can continue to fly. But also, this has three antennas and three remote controls. So we have a remote control tucked in the bowels under here, about here, but two layers deep of heavy armor. And then we have another one in the sort of middle section over here and a duplicate on that side to the point where uh, let's go and demonstrate in fact on the one we've just used rather than shoot the large red let's shoot this at our fighter friend over there so try and line it up without needing to use the crosshair let's charge forward and release the warheads they're going to blow and actually they did pretty damn well but that's, the, that's why I put this weapon system on a ship to begin with, is if you put a big weapon system on a ship, you can really, really surprise the first fighter you come across, or the first bomber that you come across, or even the first big red you come across. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to shoot at the big red. But another example would be if we dive in here, and in this view, I'm just going to go and ram one side of my ship off completely. And you'll notice, again, this thing is very, very maneuverable. No power problems because it's got two large reactors and these, these batteries aren't even on. They're there as a backup. But the idea is you can smash this thing and it'll survive. Now, okay, we've come out of the cockpit there. But if we were re remote controlling that, that'd still be going without any problem whatsoever. You know, we've got to remember that we've probably taken out the front antenna. Uh, well, actually, maybe not even the front antenna's down. Because the front antenna's in this floor here. So, no, we, we've still got the front antenna. We've lost one remote control. So we've got an antenna deep in here. Actually, you can see the antenna remote control from knocking this side open. So you get an idea of what's inside there. It's not all heavy armor. There's some light in there too, just to keep the weight down. And then on this side, of course, it seems like, yeah, again, remote control and antenna, they're buried in there and they're untouched. So we've got two remote controls and three antennas remaining on this craft even though the front end is completely ruined and I'm not actually sure we'd be able to do any further damage with it we'd still be able to recover it we'd still be able to run away so I've loaded the world back up again so that we can take a pot shot at the large red just before we finish but before we do so I'll just talk a little bit about the last few features I haven't mentioned on this craft so Obviously, these missiles have been designed to be able to be launched and will clear the craft fast enough that you can launch them during maneuvering. You can launch them pretty much at any speed. And the craft itself has obviously been designed to be very maneuverable. Uh, in fact, the only direction in which it lacks maneuverability is backwards. Uh, there are a decent number of forward thrusters in order to help the inertial dampers work and help correct your movement. But other than that, this is designed to be a strafing ship or a dive bomb running sort of ship. Come in, dive in, release your warhead and can get the hell out, come back round for another pass. It can take the punishment, but that's the best way to make use of its firepower and the fact that if you do it that way, you're going to keep coming back because it is very tough. And that leads me on to the second point, which is that everything in here has been designed to have redundancy, pretty much. So everything has got multiple connections. Everything has multiple backups of itself, which is why we've got the batteries for example on the top and bottom they did look cool but at the same time if you get knocked out with your reactor or whatever you've got some solution for that the same is true for the entire conveyor network the same is true for a lot of the internals of this ship you can lose a large portion of it and the ship itself will still function just fine the last thing i'm going to talk about before we fire things off is the fact that these things are mounted on rotors now that is partly because i wanted to have things sort of angled like this so that it hugged around the cockpit nicely and cleared the craft nicely so I could keep them nice and tight, nice and protected. But that's partly because I think they are probably the most stable launching method in Space Engineers at the moment. Uh, I haven't used them like this before, but all my experiences today have said that these things separate super duper cleanly. The only flaw with them, and of course everyone's been saying this this whole way through this, is in multiplayer this thing is going to be an absolute nightmare. I can't wait until they sort out the rotor issues, but I'm aware that right now this is this is more of a single player craft than a multiplayer craft. You might just get away with it on a good server, but otherwise these things are going to be a bit of a nightmare. And yes, you'll probably blow yourself up with them. So to finish off, let's go and have a few pot shots at Big Red over there. So charge on in same usual stuff let's get the machine guns on already they'll help us aim if nothing else hit two hit four to launch those out let's start bringing the missiles in 
try and slow ourselves down in time because I didn't really release stuff soon enough and let's start delivering the pain. Our little warhead thing has blown the side of the ship open quite nicely and then we can continue <coughs> pardon me and then we can continue opening things up with our Gatlings and our rockets and still being capable of maneuvering really quite quickly if we want to especially around a ship this sort of size. So thanks a lot for watching guys hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit like please hit subscribe really helps me in the channel out and otherwise I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.